Hey guys, so it's finally it's time over here to do my iPhone 5 or my, my Galaxy S2 versus iPhone 5 video here. So I got some pretty good responses here on my new Galaxy S2 reviews. A lot of people have been interested in them and a lot of people have been viewing them and a lot of the, those good awesome things. So I thought that why not do a Galaxy S2 versus iPhone 5 because it's pretty interesting. I mean like the iPhone 5 costs like at least uh, twice in my country than the Galaxy S2 does. So I thought that we can do a quick little video here comparing them and have some fun over here. So let's go ahead and do this. So let's go ahead and now start as I usually do. Let's go ahead and look a little bit quickly here at the design. Then we're going to go uh, over the specs. Then we're going to go ahead and do some speed testing. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this, shall we? So as we can see here, uh, when we are looking at them here at the front, they almost have the same kind of uh, display size. A 4 inch over here, 4.3 on the Galaxy S2. You can also see a rounded off home button there on the iPhone, and while we have a little bit more rectangular look there on the Galaxy S2. You can also see that we have more rounded off design here, especially on the on the iPhone 5 compared to the Galaxy S2. We also have the Samsung logo here at the top, both have a front facing camera, and both uh, have, are black over here. Also one thing that I can see is that it's easier uh, to see kind of where the display starts here on the Galaxy S2 compared to the iPhone. The iPhone uh, in general have a more like a black feel to it here. It's almost hard to see where the screen begins, but here you know you can see a little bit of like a another kind of black uh, over here so you can see it so uh, that's basically the front no no biggie over there if you go ahead and take a look here at the bottom we can see that we both have the connectors over here for charging uh, apple's new connector that you can uh, put in uh, both both ways and then you also of course here have the micro usb over here uh, but also you get kind of like the headphone jack there with 3.5 millimeter jack and then also you can see the microphone and the, and the, the speaker down here on the iPhone. So if you go ahead now and look at the top of the device, we can see here that we get the power, power on button on the iPhone. Uh, but we have the headphone jack here, of course, on the top on the Galaxy S2. What I prefer personally is having it at the bottom uh, as the iPhone. Because usually when I have my device in my pocket, uh, I put them in my pocket and then I put this side first into my pocket and then if you have like a headphone jack up here you're gonna bend the cable so I really like that kind of new design that Apple went uh, with having it down here at the bottom instead so if you go ahead now and look at the the right side of the phone you can see that we only get the nano sim on the iPhone 5 and the nano sim is of course the smallest sim um, kind of size what we get like the only mini sim here, a little bigger sim uh, on the back of this device. If you remove, re remove the back plate, uh, you will be able to input the mini sim. But it's not nano sim though, because the Galaxy S2 came out first. It, it came out in February 2011, while the iPhone, of course, is a new device here for 2012. So, of course, here on the Galaxy S2, we have the power button here on the side and um, I prefer that personally but uh, you know because uh, it, it's a little bit easier to reach here with my thumb to you know turn on the device on, on the iPhone of course I use my little finger here at the top but the iPhone also I mean like it's a little bit more slim than the Galaxy S2 so it still works with having the power button here uh, up at the top if you go ahead now and look at the left side we can see that we have um, you know volume up and down here on the iPhone perfect you know very, very easy to reach and then you have that kind of mute switch and then of course we have the same kind of design here on the the Galaxy S2 you know uh, up and down and then you can also see that you can remove the back here at the side I'm pretty sure yeah so now when we go ahead and take a look here it's kind of hard to do it on in, in, the, in kind of when I'm doing this video I'm having a hard time here to remove the back as you can see here you have a little bit thing there that you should take up to remove the back usually I don't have a problem with this but now hmm wow that is interesting okay whatever I can't remove the back right now it could be because I cut my 
you know, they're kind of small, so it's a little bit hard here to remove the back. But if you remove the back, you have that removable battery. Uh, and also what you get is, of course, the, that uh, kind of SD card that you can put in to, for extra storage. And then, of course, your normal like mini SIM card. On the back here, we can see we have the 8 megapixel camera up there on the Galaxy S2. And also we have an 8 megapixel camera here on the iPhone 5. I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit more about the camera later in this video. And then in terms of, you know, feel over here, uh, the iPhone feels probably a little bit less plastic. Whatever you now prefer, that's totally up to you to decide. Also the, the Apple iPhone 5 here, uh, it should have some kind of protective thing uh, over the lens. So if you accidentally drop your phone or something, it should be hard to get scratches here uh, on the lens which is of course very, very, very nice. Let's go ahead and take a very, very close up look here at how they look like. You can see it's pointing outwards here on the Galaxy S2, while on the iPhone, it doesn't point outwards. It's kind of like extremely like clean design. You can just rub your fingers up here and it's nothing that's pointing out. And of course you have this little bump here on the, uh, the Galaxy S2 also. And you have the speaker. So that was a quick, quick little design look here on these two uh, awesome phones. So let's go ahead now and continue on and talk a little bit about the specs. So if you go ahead and turn these two on. So the first thing I want to mention here is that uh, uh, the iPhone 5 is quicker if you don't get the Galaxy S2 LTE variant. Of course, there's there's a ton of variants out of the Galaxy S2 and this uh, Galaxy S2 that I have over here, it's a non-LTE variant. In my country though, something I want to say, LTE is a little bit more new, it's, it hasn't been available for that long time as in the US. So I do know there's a Galaxy S2 LTE variant out in my country, there's also a like, new, new Galaxy S3 uh, that also is an LTE variant. Um, while the the iPhone 5 it should have like LTE speeds in the in the US, but those works on bands that's not available. You know, if you use the iPhone in my country, they don't have LTE for the iPhone, but they have LTE uh, variant of the Galaxy S2 and the Galaxy S3. So in my country, you can get faster speeds with the Galaxy S2 if you buy the correct variant, the Galaxy S2 LTE or the Galaxy S3 LTE. But it doesn't work for the iPhone 5. But if you live in the US. Uh, you know, you should be able to easily pick up LTE variants of these two devices. So, something I quickly want to mention over there. You should also remember that the, the Galaxy S2, uh, it's a lot older, of course, than the iPhone 5. The Galaxy S2 almost, uh, you know, it was, you know, two months into, uh, two months into 2011, where it got uh, unveiled at the MDC in Barcelona, of course. So, of course, that is... Um, you know, kind of cool, it's kind of like an old school device, while the iPhone 5 just recently came out in September, uh, and of course the iPhone 5 is way more expensive right now. Uh, the uh, Galaxy S2, if you talk about the dimensions, it is a little longer, also it's a little bit wider, uh, while the iPhone 5 is thinner in terms of, you know, thickness up here. You see that it's a tiny, tiny bit thinner. And then also what it is, let's see here if we can go ahead and close. Also what the iPhone 5 is, is that it is lighter. They almost have the same kind of a feel when you hold them, but I think it's like four grams less on the iPhone 5. Something that, you know, Apple guys always said, you know, before the iPhone 5 came out, they always said, oh, I like the kind of a premium feel uh, of my, I like that kind of premium feel on my iPhone. It's a lot heavier and feels a lot more exclusive than Android devices. And now when the iPhone is like lighter, uh, you know, no one is complaining about that. So I think that's kind of, kind of interesting. So, you know, here I have like an iPhone 4, or maybe it's a 4S, and I can never feel that, you know, they have a lot, lot, you know, this one is a lot lighter, but it's still a little bit bigger, but they still, Apple still in some kind of cool way, they remain that kind of nice quality premium feel. Uh, so it still feels kind of awesome. Now, fanboys are gonna rage in this video, uh, but uh, I gotta say that, you know, when you hold it like this, uh, it feels, uh, you know, it is a lot lighter. Uh, and uh, it's pretty interesting actually how they feel. 
Um, but it still feels kind of exclusive, you know, it's like iPhones usually uh, kind of feel, even though I don't think that no one is like thinking like when they hold it, when they use the device as a daily use, I don't think they are, they sit down and be like, oh, does this device feel exclusive in the hand? How does the material feel? I mean, like people, that's, that's like no, nothing that people think about, but when you make a review like this, of course, the iPhone feels a little bit more exclusive, you know, kind of like a nice feel to it. Like it's the kind of like a material and the finish of the devices that makes it feel a little bit more cool and awesome over there. If you go ahead now and continue down to the amazing screen. So as I said in the beginning, we have a 4.3 inch screen here, while we have a four inch screen on the iPhone 5, bumping up from 3.5 inch to four inch here. Something that Apple finally decided to do. Could it be because Steve Jobs died and then finally Apple felt like, oh, now finally we can bump up the screen and then RC is not gonna get pissed off because he's not alive anymore. But no, I don't know. Uh, but that's always been a major problem with me that you know Apple hasn't bumped up the screen. Now they're actually bumping up a little bit. Let's hope that they will make an iPhone that's bigger, 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 uh, you know, in the years to come here. But 4.3 inch, it's a little bit bigger here, the Galaxy S2. Uh, also contains the, the Super AMOLED screen and I have the, the screen here turned on to uh, display in a dynamic way which makes the screen a little bit more colorful. You can see here that we do have uh, different kinds of modes here for the screen. So you can see that I have turned on to dynamic. If you have it on standard, uh, it's not as you know bright and then the iPhone is easily gonna get brighter. But this is the thing that we'll go over a little bit soon that, you know, you have a lot of more settings, of course, in the Android world compared to iOS. Um, you know, Apple rely a little bit more on the sim simplicity. So you have this super AMOLED screen which has a lot of awesome colors. It's a lot, it's so awesome for video and stuff like that. You know, colors, the, the saturation there is so amazing. Uh, while Apple used their own kind of this LED backlit IPS TFT display. Um, and the, the resolution here on the iPhone is 640 times 1136, which makes it to have an amazing PPI that basically means the pixels per inch. So pixels uh, per inch looks really, 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 really crisp and amazing. And also Apple have bumped up uh, kind of the colors and they made the colors looking better here on the iPhone 5 compared to like the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 4S. Uh, and also what I want to say here a little bit quick here is the resolution of course on the Galaxy S2 and um, you know it's lower so it's not as high PPI 217 PPI kind of ish so you get more like around 330 PPI here on the on the iPhone 5 that's around 100 more pixels per inch on the screen so you have the resolution here of 480 times 800 which makes that the text ain't that crisp. It's probably very, very, very hard to see in the video, but if you really, really look closely, I'm gonna go ahead and probably check out some reading here pretty soon, then you definitely will see that the iPhone 5 is a lot better, uh, you know, if you do a lot of reading. You will really, 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 really see a difference. So let's go ahead now and continue down the line and check out some other cool things. Gorilla Glass, if you talk about protection, both these should rock Gorilla Glass. Uh, on the front side, uh, not not Gorilla Glass 2 because that wasn't like even a, it didn't even like exist uh, when they were producing these kinds of amazing screens. Um, if you talk about storage here, the Galaxy S2 here is available in 16 and 32 gigabyte variant, not like the new Galaxy S3, which also is available in 64 gigabyte variant. Apple is continuously using their 16, 32, and 64. Uh, 1632 and 64 gigabyte variant of their iPhone, but they don't have an SD card option. Uh, but as you did see, it was, it was only a, a, in internal storage maximum on the Galaxy 2 is 32 gigabyte, but you have an SD card option. So SD cards go up to like 64 gigabyte right now, even though on GSM Arena they only listed that the Galaxy S2. Uh, can have like a 32 gigabyte SD card, but that could be just because it's outdated and they haven't updated that, I don't know. But I do know that there's like SD cards of up to like 64 gigabyte, and I also see someone like 128 gigabyte, that's kind of crazy, I'm sure if, how that works. Both also rock here one gigabyte of RAM, even though the 
the like the Galaxy S2 only lives that it has like 800 or something a while ago. I think that could be because the operating system or something it's using the that other. If you talk here about Bluetooth and connectivity, because there's a lot of Bluetooth devices out there, like my Apple Mouse uh, or my Magic Mouse uh, use Bluetooth, my my Bluetooth keyboard, uh, my Apple keyboard also use Bluetooth. You get Bluetooth 4.0 here with the iPhone 5, which should be awesome for you know different kinds of gadgets and things like that. You know, kind of new, kind of cool stuff. Well, you get Bluetooth 3.0 here on the uh, the Galaxy S2 and also you should have in NFC technology a uh, GSM Arena were listing it as it was optional on the Galaxy S2 so I'm really not sure if that means it has an NFC of, or you know if you can you know if or if it's just that you can enable it in settings I'm not sure uh, you don't get NFC here though with the iPhone 5 and NFC is like a new technology you can like transfer files in some stores are already right now you start using it as mobile payments which is pretty cool which is very very cool there um, now if we go ahead and talk about some fun things here about the camera you get the 8 megapixel camera on both and I'm gonna go ahead and shake them out pretty soon uh, you know take some you know quick pictures here so you can see them for yourself so 8 megapixel camera on the back and also 2 megapixel camera here on the Galaxy S2 the front facing camera was only a 1.2 megapixel camera here on the iPhone 5 but uh, I've checked out the quality and as I said previously it's not all about the megapixels the iPhone 5 seems to produce you know better better pictures and especially in light when you have a white, white environment but you have some you know colorful you know you have light that uh, kind of makes um, it, it looks a little bit yellow and uh, the iPhone 5 definitely is a lot better at uh, making the white look like white while my Galaxy S2 here when I tried it in the kitchen was making a little bit of a more kind of like a yellow feel or jello feel of the the kitchen when it's white so the iPhone 5 definitely is better there uh, with new sensor new technology compared to previous iPhones also I checked out the front facing camera and what I did see was that it lagged here on the Galaxy S2 uh, when I tried out the front facing camera and I was moving it around a little bit to see my face I can see that the picture kind of lagged and everything and that was kind of awkward while on the iPhone 5 it was like smooth all the time so that's definitely more important for me uh, even, even though it may, the quality of those pictures on the front facing may be a little, little bit better on the Galaxy S2 but I don't think so uh, but even if there are things more important here that the iPhone 5 it, you know has like kind of like kind of like a smooth experience there in the front facing camera if you're going to do FaceTime or if you're just going to go and record yourself or want to record yourself very easily And that was only in picture mode though, so it could be changed if you go ahead and do it in video mode. Now, if you go ahead now and continue on the line to you know the operating system that they're using, of course we have the latest version of iOS. You know, Apple has their own kind of iOS here, uh, which is a lot about you know apps, 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 apps. But they've also you know of course in iOS five like they've added this kind of new notification area, which they kind of did steal from like Android. And I'm not really not sure how it works. Like I have two different widgets here. I'm not sure how to remove them. Uh, maybe in settings or something. But it doesn't se really seem that you can customize this too much, which is something that I definitely do hope that Apple um, fix in the future. Something that's very very cool with iOS though is that they have this kind of integration with Twitter and Facebook, which is two very very popular things right now. Uh, so you can see I have now I've synced my Facebook account and my uh, Twitter account here with my iPhone. So I can just tap the post. And then I can just type something in, and I had tap to tweet. Oops. So tap to tweet works the same, and it's also awesome. it works with Siri as well. But iOS it's very very straightforward, and I mean like in 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 terms of how it looks like, it hasn't really changed that much uh, the last five years. Settings kind of still looks the same, and <laughs> it is kind of like unique there with iOS that it still doesn't look extremely updated. Uh, and all those good things and of course you get uh, Android on the Galaxy S2 I'm rocking right now Android 4.0.4 ICS because I checked out to see if I can update it to Android 4 Duan Jelly Bean I do know that that's going to be a wear ball on uh, on this device in like January from Samsung also like for the Galaxy Note the 4.1 Jelly Bean of Android is going to be a wear ball uh, I made a video talking about the cool new things with Android 4.1 Jelly Bean you know product butter which is making the menus much much more smooth uh, Google Now which is totally totally amazing I've been you know starting to use it a little bit and it's kind of cool like when I when I use Google, Google Now on my 
on my Galaxy Note 2. And basically what happens is like, let's say I'm on my computer, I go into Google Maps, I just wanna search for a random place on my computer. Uh, then that will pop up on my Galaxy Note 2, like the instructions how I should get there. Uh, with Google Now, like it's a card that comes up. And Google Now really will, you know, it's it really like Google is kind of scanning it and it, it's really amazing, you know, Google Now, if you wanna go ahead and check it out more, you know, there's tons of videos about that online. Uh, but right now I'm only rocking 4.0.4 ICS. I do know you can flash, um, you can flash Android 4.1 uh, Jelly Bean on the Galaxy S2 and I already made a review of that. Uh, I made a review of Android 4.2 Jelly Bean for the Galaxy S2 and you can go ahead and check that out and it's very very easy to flash uh, that and install that new and Android 4.1 Jelly Bean is so much faster in menus and has so many more cool things. Uh, then and a form that was for us, yes, but it's gonna be a while well, well, very soon here And I wanted to make this fair kind of review here that you know for a normal user I'm thinking normal user is gonna flash that much. Maybe a hacker. Maybe a geek is gonna do that a lot of course uh, But in terms of a normal user I'm rocking latest iOS 6 here. That's official from Apple versus uh, You know the the latest version here of Android as well with my Galaxy S2 officially from Samsung uh, so that's that's kind of interesting over there. Uh, if you talk about the chips that now that both these are running, Apple of course is using their own Apple, you know, their A6 chipset that they produce themselves. And Samsung itself is of course using their own kind of Exynos. Uh, I think it's like the 4412, uh, it's like in the Galaxy 3, or it could be some kind of older version there in, in terms of number, but at least it's the Exynos chipset. Uh, so it's a dual core 1.2 gigahertz Cortex E9 processor that you get on the Galaxy S2 where you get the dual core 1 gigahertz processor here on the iPhone 5. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a little bit higher there on the, 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 <laughs> on, uh, on the Galaxy S2. Uh, but they're running different. I mean like it's not all about the numbers there It's a lot about optimizations and Apple's iOS is really like buttery smooth here Even though Android 4.1 Jelly Bean is quicker uh, Android 4.1 Jelly Bean is uh, better in, in iOS in terms of smoothness But Android 4.4 ICS that I'm rocking right now It's not as quick in terms of menus, but it's still pretty decent but you know, not compared to iOS 6, it's kind of bad. But Android 4.0 Jelly Bean, definitely it is quicker. So that one will of course come out very, very soon. Uh, so if you go ahead now and go down to the kind of the GPU. So you get the Mali 400 MP here. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's clocked at like 400 megahertz or it could be 200 megahertz on the Galaxy S2. I do know that on the, on the Galaxy S3, it's kind of like clocked at 400 megahertz or something. Uh, so 400 megahertz or 200 or 400, I'm pretty sure it's 200 megahertz Mali 400 MP GPU uh, that you get on the Galaxy S2, which is pretty good. Yeah, I mean for new games, so I tried out uh, GTA, uh, the new GTA game, GTA Y City on it, and it was running kind of smooth. Uh, not as good though as the Galaxy S3, of course, but still pretty pretty decent. Um, but of course, the iPhone 5 rocks like a triple core GPU, it's the PowerVR SGX543 MP3, which is like triple core graphics, which means that it has like three cores clocked at like 230 megahertz. So it's a lot, lot better there, a lot stronger in terms of like new games, like Real Racing 2 and all those kinds of amazing games. You really, really will produce some amazing graphics there, plus with the Retina display and that's, uh, that has such a high PPI there. Uh, you will really won't have like a problem there with this triple core graphics. So that's of course something that's extremely, extremely nice there. Uh, you talk about the last thing here that's kind of big about the specs. Uh, is you get a little bit higher battery life here uh, or a bigger battery built in. But th that's kind of like to be expected because the form factor it is a little bit bigger. Uh, but 14, 14 milliamps uh, on the iPhone 5 while you get 16, 50 milliamp battery here on the Galaxy S2. And Samsung, uh, from my experience, been, they have been pretty good at battery life. The new Galaxy Note 2 has amazing battery life, and I'm pretty sure that Android 4.1 Jelly Bean will, you know, make battery life even even better. Uh, Apple, from what I've heard, and they've been having some complaints that their battery life hasn't been that good. And I can only talk uh, from my own experience and my Apple Touch uh, fourth generation, or my Apple Touch fifth generation. I've been having some battery life problems with it. It's been draining pretty quick. Uh, but now when I updated to the latest version of iOS, it's a little bit better. 
Uh, but still, I'm pretty sure that you had kind of kind of the same better luck here, even though that you know it's a little bit um, it's a little bit um, less here on the new iPhone, but it has new iOS updates, so it will probably produce a little bit better results. But I, uh, you know, that's only my guess here. With Antphone Bon Jelly being the battery life is probably going to be way better here on the Galaxy too. But I still think the Galaxy S2 or the battery life is, is pretty pretty decent for the price that you would you will pay for the Galaxy S2 here. Uh, so if we go ahead now and continue a little bit, we're going to go ahead and look at some speed testing. So speed testing. Ain't that fun, huh? Of course it's very very fun. Gonna go ahead and close down the apps. We are gonna use the stock browser here on my uh, on my Galaxy S2. So let's go ahead and fire it up. And then we're gonna go ahead and use the Safari here. So we are gonna go ahead now and start off by going to a website called um, uh, let's see here Phone Arena. go there we go seems like the iPhone 5 there we go the iPhone 5 finished up quicker one thing I immediately can say here is and you can probably also see it in the video uh, the iPhone 5 display really you can really see they crush the Galaxy S2 in here when you are in the browser white looks so much more white um, let's see if we go ahead and go to brightness and color you can see it's, it's on full as well. Could it be because I'm running on dynamic colors? Let's go ahead and check it out. There we go. Let's go ahead and change to the normal one that probably most people will use. I can still see that the, the iPhone 5 has a much, much you know, brighter display, especially, uh, which makes the color looks a lot better. Uh, but you can really, really see, especially when you are in the browser, that uh, you know it looks kind of weird on the Galaxy S2. Uh, but of course, that's up for you to decide here. But if we now go ahead and see here, if we can go ahead and zoom in on something, I can say that the performance, performance-wise, it's a lot better here in terms of smoothness, of course, on the iPhone 5. But it's not bad on the Galaxy S2. Galaxy S2 is still a lot like it's still like snappy, especially when you move around like this, you won't really see a big difference. Especially the big thing I can see here that's different is like when you zoom in and out, you can see that the G the, the GPU, the triple core GPU here is a lot better on the iPhone 5. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, in terms of colors, you can really, 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 really see that you know it's a lot more white here on the uh, on the iPhone 5. Which is definitely something that I think most people will appreciate. You can also see that the text is more crisp. And you can also see that I can zoom in here probably also a little bit more. Uh, the text is more crisp. Dark black is more black here. Go ahead and tap on this. You can see that GPU renders everything a lot quicker on the iPhone. There we go. The iPhone 5 finished up. SNES emulator for Windows RT and Windows 8. Ooh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> so let's go ahead now and zoom in a little bit. And you can see here definitely also on the, in, in terms of the colors. It, you know, it is better. People are going to probably dislike this video right now because I'm saying like it is when I'm having these two devices in my hands. Let's go ahead and go and check out another website. Go ahead and go to The Verge, another tech website here. Okay, this one is loading the mobile version. There we go, even though it loaded a little bit, you know, I was going down, I'm pretty sure the iPhone 5 would have won over there. 
uh, we can see here again it looks a lot weird here on the on our little Galaxy S2. One thing definitely I do enjoy more with Android here is that I can only I can do like one little swipe here and it will continue to swipe a little bit more. Just like this, you can just like if I want to really go to, go up to the top, I can really do that. Okay, you can see that it went to the top immediately. If I do it quick, if I want to like go a little bit slow, it will go slow. On the iPhone, it's a little bit harder. If I want to go immediately to the bottom here, I can't do that. <clears throat> Very, very annoying. Very, very annoying. Let's go ahead and uh, something affirms malware exploit on Galaxy S3 and others. <clears throat> oh, that's bad. <laughs> Let's go ahead and tap on this. There we go. Finish up way, way, way quicker. You can definitely see that it looks brighter. It looks brighter, it looks so much brighter. Let's go ahead and take a look at this guy from... You don't know who that is. But definitely the, the iPhone 5 is, a, is a clearly a winner here. Let's go ahead and go to Pocket now, which is actually one of my favorite companies right now. Let's go ahead and do this. And it already has rendered. Wow. <clears throat> there we go, finished up. So clearly, as you can see, loads up all websites quicker than the Galaxy S2. And it's a lot more smooth when you go in and out. But the thing I do like more with Android is that, you know, you can swipe down quicker. Uh, but the colors here really look weird here on the, on the Galaxy S2 compared to the iPhone 5 especially in the browser. And we go, it finished up. This page even look weird here on, on the iPhone or on the Galaxy S2, wow. But it's still very good for the price you pay for the Galaxy S2. I mean like, that's the thing I'm trying to get here across. I mean like, it's still very, very good. It's not that far behind. For the price that we, you will pay for it compared to an iPhone. Let's go ahead now and go out. You can see also that it exits out apps quicker. Just because these devices too have like one gigabyte of RAM. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna go ahead and keep the apps running in the background. So you can see here we do have the app. There we go. So let's go ahead now and continue to do some other fun things. Let's go ahead and try out some app speed. Let's go ahead now and fire up Facebook. And let's see here. There we go, it has loaded, uh, both updated to the latest version here of, uh, of um, the app here. You see that it did render here quicker on the iPhone, this kind of picture. And also when I go up and down, it's more smooth here on the iPhone. And also what I can see here is that especially in, in the browser, especially in the browser here, I can see, oh yeah, also you can see that one renders quicker, uh, I have something new. Uh, it's a lot better here in, in, in the Facebook app when you go up and down and then in the browser, uh, in the Safari browser. Uh, this is kind of like how it should be, I think, in the browser, uh, in Safari, but it's not. Uh, it's a little bit more choppy here when I go up and down. Let's go ahead and, and it feels a little bit better, it's easier to stop here. Go ahead and tap on my body here. You can see that it renders everything quicker. And you can also see that colors looks a little bit better, a little bit more, you know, you have a little bit more brightness here. It's not that far behind though, you know, in, in terms of Facebooking. The biggest thing probably here is that you know, when you go up and down, it feels a little bit more choppy here on the Galaxy S2. No big deal though. 
But of course you get this kind of like premium feel here on the iPhone 5 compared to the Galaxy S2. So let's go ahead and go out. You can see again, <clears throat> it uh, you know usually closes up, uh, closes out apps a lot, lot, lot quicker. Let's go ahead and check out the YouTube app. And you can see that it loads YouTube a lot, lot quicker, even though I'm signed in here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, check out some videos. Go. There we go. And again, the screen is so small on the iPhone, so usually sometimes I, I tap on the wrong thing, and I hate that suggestion thing that comes up. So here we have one of my videos. Let's go ahead and tap on that. And you can see that even though it was an ad, it, it finished up here quicker on the iPhone. There we go, a little bit quicker here on the iPhone. So this is my video where I smash an iPhone. <clears throat> and the one that I think looks better here is the, the iPhone 5, especially in colors. White looks a little bit more white, the video is not as dark here. As on the Galaxy S2. But in terms of video mode like this, uh, it really, really doesn't matter like uh, that the PPI is like 100 more PPIs. That's really not something that you can see here in, in, in like the video. It's more like when you read and when you're in the browser, especially reading, you can see it a lot more. And when, when I go down here on the iPhone, you can also see that, you know, this is not that iPhone, okay? This is another iPhone. <laughs> this is another iPhone 5. So, it will smash. It's not bad, or it's not good, I mean. So, if we want to go down again. There we go. So a quick little look there also in you know in terms of video and a little bit of uh, viewing a video. It's not that far behind in, in terms of video viewing, but uh, especially colors when you're watching videos is a lot 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 better on the iPhone 5 here. So when we go ahead now and continue on, we're gonna go ahead and check out Google Maps. Google Maps is something I think a lot of people you use. Uh, Google Maps finally is released now for uh, for iOS, uh, as you probably do know, or you know, iOS in iOS six, Apple replaced uh, Google Maps with Apple Maps, and Apple Maps kind of sucks. So what Google did now is that they have released now Google Maps for the App Store. So I've downloaded it, and it has a very, very simple UI. Something I do really think that um, a lot of Apple users will appreciate. So let's go ahead and fire up a Google Maps on both these two devices. So you can see here we have satellite mode. Let's go ahead and turn that off. So basically this is the new UI of Google Maps for iOS. I made a full review of it, but it's a very, very simple UI. Down here at the left side, you have your GPS to go immediately to straight where you are. And then also you have this kind of swipe. Oh, wait a sec. Um, you have this thing, if you swipe down here, you have quick access to changing some quick things, like if you want to see public transport, okay, that's not available where I live, but you can see traffic here, and then you also have, of course, the important satellite view, if you do appreciate that. Uh, to do the same thing here on uh, in Android, uh, in that kind of uh, app, there's a lot more, t there's, uh, there's not that much swiping, it's a lot more tapping, and I think, I think swiping is much better. You just have me stating in my Windows Phone 8 review, so I think that Microsoft really has something awesome there uh, in, um, uh, in, in Windows Phone 8 that you swipe more. It's a little bit more natural. You can swipe almost wherever you want, but tapping, you need to do it in a specific area. You can see we have some more options here, like terrain, uh, in traffic, we have that, transit lines is one more, latitude, you have your maps, you have bicycling. 
Uh, but let's go ahead and turn on, no, not terrain. <clears throat> so you can see here, we can go ahead and go down on both. Uh, they're both kind of uh, displaying the same thing. And as you can see, it's not a well ball on anyone here. You can see that, we, oh yeah, we also have traffic here. I just need to zoom out a little bit. But it's basically the same kind of Google Maps here on both. So you will kind of get the same kind of experience here on both. Um, so uh, I think the UI, it seems like you have a lot more features here in, in, in the Android version, but, but it's kind of, you know, the same. Uh, but they made the UI a little bit better here in Google Maps here because you have this quick little search area up here and it will pop up like this kind of cool. Let's go ahead and search for a place. Say we want to go to, say we want to go over there. You can see we have this swiping area here. You can see that we went to a place over here and you have this awesome swipe area to see the full place here. Uh, we have share, we can save that area and you can also see how, how, how long time it will take uh, to go there by car and we can go ahead and tap on this and we will uh, be able to walk over there and then also we have kind of bus option over here and you can see different kinds of instructions here how, how you will get to that place and you will see you know a little bit more time options here which i, which I definitely do appreciate um, uh, but you don't have uh, you don't have bicycle i think uh, if you do the same thing over here you just go to search down here <clears throat> and just go ahead and search for that place. You can see that the UI is a little bit different. I think it's better here on the iPhone, definitely. You can tap on get directions. Let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and cancel this. Uh, you can see here, we can also walk. We have the bicycle option, but car probably is the normal one. Uh, also in navigation, uh, if, if we go ahead now and tap on this and go by car instead, there we go, if we tap on that, you can see that when we start navigation over here, it won't open like a new app, you know, Google navigation is kind of like built into the Google Maps, but when we tap here on navigation, you can see that first, okay, accept, it will open up Google Maps navigation, <clears throat> which takes a little bit more like you need to open this thing up. It's no big deal though, but I think it's a little bit more nicely done here on the iPhone. Let's go ahead and close down. Exit navigation. It's a little bit more nicely done there. You don't have to press on any menus to close uh, kind of like the route, so kind of very nice. <clears throat> so let's go ahead now and continue. So what I wanna quickly show off here is we're gonna go ahead and fire up Twitter. And uh, let's see here. So many tweets. So when we go ahead now, you can see kind of the UI is a little bit different here as well. Most of the many things is down here at the bottom. When we refresh here, it's a little bit quicker on the iPhone 5. Uh, let's see when we go to uh, connect mentions. A lot of apps, it seems like they've done a little bit more quality time to optimize them. Uh, when we go down like this, you can also see that it seems like the iPhone loads up uh, kind of pictures here at the side a lot quicker. But it's something that I also do appreciate. But if we can go ahead here and tap on someone. Hmm, seems like I'm getting, wait a sec. Maybe we should get to home. Let's go ahead and tap on this guy. There we go, let's go ahead and tap on this guy or this one. You can see here, we have a, kind of exactly the same UI here. We can quickly make a response. It's kind of the same. Uh, because it doesn't have to load up many things, of course. Uh, if you go ahead now and close out of that, let's go now and check out uh, some downloading from, of course, the Play Store here in Android versus the App Store here. Let's go ahead and like download an app. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and see here if I could find. Oh, screen is so small. That's my main problem with iPhones. Screen is so small. Let's go ahead and see. Can we find the App Store in here? Huh. App Store. There we go. Let's go ahead and fire up the App Store. They have a little bit different UI here, but basically kind of the same things over here. Let's go ahead and search for an app. Let's say Spotify. I use it every single day. And of course it's a web on like every single platform out there. Okay, you can see here that uh, again, Apple has been better here at optimizing the UI. So they know that when you know when you search for Spotify, probably like 90% of the people or like 95% of the people will download this app. And this is the app, this is the app that uh, you know Apple display for you. While in, um, in the Play Store, you get a ton of options here when like 90% of the people will tap here. So it's like one uh, less, one less uh, kind of uh, click here in, 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 in iOS. So that's something that is very, very nice. So let's go ahead and tap on install. There you go, it's already installing. There we go, successfully installed. Okay, there we go. So you can see that it finished up quicker here on the Galaxy S2. So as we could see over here, it loaded up quicker. That was kind of surprising. Let's go ahead now and go out. It could also be because the app was bigger or, you know, we don't, we don't know, but it was quicker over there. Let's go ahead and fire up a quick game here. Or I think we're gonna go, go ahead and do that very, very soon. Uh, let's go ahead and do some benchmarking. So I do know that you all love it when you benchmark. So we have Geekbench here, well on both platforms. Gonna go ahead and run some quick benchmarks. And you do also see that we, we did have more RAM here uh, available on the device on, on the iPhone. There we go, finish up quicker on Galaxy S2. You can see, oh, it's not that kind of surprising, but I mean, like, I'm pretty sure the, the iPhone is rocking also Cortex A9, so the processor is actually, you know, it's 1.2, it's a little bit higher clocked here on the Galaxy S2, so the processor should be like better. Uh, but in terms of GPU, uh, definitely the, uh, the, the, well, lag. <laughs> uh, it's probably just the app. Uh, you get an uh, uh, integer score, you get higher here on uh, the iPhone 5. Floating points also a little bit higher, memory score a lot, lot higher, almost twice here on the uh, the iPhone 5. Uh, so that could be good if you do a lot of, uh, you know, or if you have a lot of, <laughs> if you do have a lot of things open up at the same time, maybe. You can see memory, 1016 megabytes, 827 megabytes. And you have some blowfish test and some awesome things. If you want to go ahead and look into detail here, wow, this app really, really likes. Uh, but I think it's mostly a, a Apple app, but still. So a quick, quick little test here, quick little look. If you talk about voice searching here on these two devices, um, uh, we are gonna go ahead and see here. Of course, uh, with Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, it's a little bit different. Then you also have the Google Now option, so you can talk to Google Now. Uh, and then also you get S voice. Now I'm pretty sure I don't have S voice in Android 4.0.4. I have voice command. Uh, but if you go ahead now and take a look at the built-in voice thing that you have in the Galaxy S2, you basically if you double tap here. What would you like to do? 
that you can see that we have this kind of lingo voice search and you can call people, you can text people, you can navigate, you can play music memo, you have the driving mode. But all those things is kind of like better optimized, better in, in the iPhone 5 because it has Siri. Uh, so of course I can do things here like play music and stuff like that. Uh, but it's a little bit quicker here on, on, on the iPhone 5 and Siri is a lot better because it's a little bit more personal and she can ask, uh, she can respond to like what is 2 plus 2 and those things. But those things is things that you will get in Android with Google Now and in Android 41 Jelly Bean. But right now with ICS I only have these kinds of horrible options. I mean like it's still pretty decent but you know look at this it's way way quicker on the iPhone. What, would you like what is 2 plus 2? Oops. What is two plus two? Checking all that. As you can see, it has more from Alpha built in, which is amazing. Uh, you can also see here that uh, we can open up apps. We can do a lot of things. Let's see if we can set an alarm here with uh, voice talk. What would you like to do? Set alarm for 6 p.m. Set alarm for 6 p.m. Oops. Oh, uh, as you can see, even even though it did talk here, it actually did successfully do set an alarm here, which is totally amazing. You can open also open up apps, open GTA Y City. As you can see, so let's go ahead and take a quick look here at some gaming. <coughs> Yo, Galaxy. Huh. Huh, weird. Okay, maybe I did something weird. <laughs> there we go. So let's go ahead and take a quick look here at the game first on... Um, First on Android. Oh, check out that guy. Mm -hmm. Check out that guy. Let's go ahead and kill him. Come on, man. It's hard to play this game on a small screen. Well. But of course the, the GPU performance and everything is amazing here on the iPhone. Too bad though that the screen is too small for me. Like 4 inch, that's too big, that's too small. I mean like I prefer big fat displays. I want to have a 5 inch iPhone. But that's not the way I want. Like a 5 plus 5 inch iPhone, you just love my Galaxy Note 2. But I haven't had a single lag, amazing performance, amazing with the retina display and all that. Let's go ahead and take a little bit quick here, look here. Let's see here. You can see that it displays darker even though I have brightness on like full. Still no lag. Still very 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 good performance here. On the on the Galaxy S2. There's really not that big thing. You can probably feel that it's a little 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 bit uh, you know, maybe a tiny, tiny choppy sometimes, when it lo especially when it loads new graphics and things. But most of the times, you have some pretty good performance here. Let's go ahead and kill someone. Still no extreme lag or anything. But extremely good performance for what you pay for. Especially, you know, when you think that it's a new game. And also if you do appreciate the little bigger screen. It's totally, totally amazing. So, quick, quick look here 
at some quick, quick little gaming. Let's go ahead now and fire them, you know, straight back on. And let's go ahead and do some quick, quick little speed testing here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the speed test app. Even though we're on my Wi-Fi, so we're not gonna get any carrier different kinds of speeds here. And you know, you live, I live in Sweden, so we don't have an iPhone that, that works on like LTE, but and if you want a LTE on the Galaxy S2, you gotta get the Galaxy S2 LTE variant. Hopefully that will change more in the future. Let's go ahead and begin a quick test here on the Galaxy S2. So we're gonna go ahead and do this maybe a few times just to go ahead and check it out. Okay, there we go. We can see way better there download. Upload is not as good though as the Galaxy S2. Let's go ahead and try it out one more time. Again, very, very good there to download. Uh, around 16, 17. Okay, let's go ahead and try it out again. Only 14, 13, 14. In terms of upload, yeah, again. So you can definitely see here that it performs better here on the iPhone 5 as well. So if we now go ahead and check out uh, Kindle a little bit quick, some very, very quick reading here, because this is really one of the best things with the iPhone that text really, really is very, very clear. So, when I used to have displays over here, I can immediately, I can immediately see that the text is super, super crisp here on the iPhone 5, uh, 328 uh, PPI or something like that, pixels per inch. You can really, really see here that, wow, that's a nice display. And it's also white, extremely, extremely white. And it is very, very, very nice text here. In term, uh, when we compare here, First of all, white doesn't look as white as on the iPhone 5. You can see also that the text ain't as clear. It's because that's 270 PPI or something like that. So it really makes the experience a lot better for me personally. Uh, some, some guy might not care, but for me personally, I think it's a very, very big deal. And I think it's extremely, extremely nice with you know crystal clear text. You can probably see it here a little bit. But I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Uh, so the display there, a lot, 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 lots about us. And, and also now, let's go ahead and take a look at the camera a little bit quick. Uh, as I've been saying, the camera on the iPhone 5 is probably a little bit better. Uh, especially like when I tried in my kitchen, the white balance is a lot, lot, lot better. And you can see here when we go ahead and zoom or you know focus, just one tap, and you can take pictures very, very, very quick. Okay, you have some quick options here to change. You have the auto, you have options, uh, and built in awesome panorama mode that works amazing. You have the HDR mode which should make it, you know, it looks a little bit more cool, something like that. And then also, as I said, when you use the front-facing camera, uh, it doesn't lag in, uh, you know, when you're moving around and stuff like that, which is also totally amazing. Uh, but in terms of, you know, quality on pictures, white with that white balance is a lot better here on the iPhone. Take a look now at the camera here on the uh, Galaxy S2. Still focus pretty quick, but taking pictures, you don't have the burst mode that you get in Galaxy S3, Galaxy S3, <laughs> uh, and not as good white balance. Still pretty decent though. I mean, like it's, it's not a problem. I don't think people complain that much about the you know the quality and stuff like that of pictures. Uh, but if, you know, if you're a pro, then you probably complain a little bit more. You have the quick shot on here for flash, turn it off, and you know, you don't have those options that you get in Android 1 Jellybean where you get 
way many more settings here uh, to you know i think also you can take like pictures faster but you have that kind of like panorama mode and more you know kind of filters that you can use already from the camera app uh, but you don't have that right now in Android 4 with four eyes yes but it will get like the Android 4 one jelly bean update very 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 soon uh, but yeah this was just a quick look here at the Galaxy S2 um, versus the Apple iPhone 5. I do hope that you have enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like. I, I've seen that a lot of my, on, a lot, on a lot of my videos. Uh, a lot of people have been liking when I've been doing these kinds of Galaxy S2 reviews because a lot of people, you know, want to see it and a lot of people want to have more reviews of it and all those things. So uh, I do this for the people that do enjoy these kinds of videos. And if you did, um, if you did watch the whole video, please in the comment section type in yellow, yellow banana, yellow banana. Then I know that you have watched the whole video and then you are amazing. <laughs> yeah, have a good day everyone and I'll see you all hopefully in the next video. Yeah, peace out.